Yeah, your face won't break. <laughs> That's a little better. Okay. On my list of what's going on. Okay, first of all, Jess, I think he's had the thing he'd like to say if you would like to stand up for Let us have it. We just wanted to take the time to thank you to everyone for your prayers, your thoughts, and the loss of the good staff. It means a lot. You are truly our family. It helps get through a lot of the last week. So, thank you very much. I'm sure you're welcome to come from everyone. And again, we are sorry for your loss. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Are you okay? Okay. Must be. You did not listen. I do. I'm sorry. I just didn't hear that. Okay. Seventy five. We must not forget. Um. Family worship event today is National Baptist Church Sunday. Join us tonight at five o'clock for hamburger hot dog barbecue. Worship the cause and please bring us side dishes. Leadership meeting tomorrow at 7. Action Venture Study Thursday at 6. And uh, Ladies Night Out on October 9th. Sign up in the back. Uh, see Bessie for details. And uh, for Carl Post, you see. Flyer today is finding your way back to God. And uh, it's nice to see that many of you have. You know where you need to be. And uh, if you didn't bring a friend this morning, bring a friend tonight. Of course, if you tell them you're good, there's food, there's probably a better chance of getting there. So, uh, invite a friend. And that's basically it for our opening this morning. The opening song this morning is Step by Step. I think when you stand up, you stand please. Oh God, come on. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, as we gather in your house today, we thank you for the opportunity we have. Together with friends and father, together with loved ones and brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you for your son and for the fact that he did endure that cross for each and every one of us and he said that you're right hand and just waiting for us to join you. Father, just now be with us as we go through our praise for you. Be with us as we sing praise to the Father, be with us as we come around the table and be with us as we give you word for the life. The Father, we hope it is all done in your honor and in your glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Okay. Our next praise hymn is I Love You, Lord. Pray that that all goes well. And uh, I know he 
I know that I've been coming for a lot of years and I know there's a party that doesn't want to go. But I can talk to you the other day, I think there's a party that said it's time that I live for the right to get some help. So keep them, please keep them in your prayers. Those who recover after from Hurricane Florence, just a few that I know of. I uh, got a message from Mary Ann this morning, and so far, Charlotte is fairly good. There's rain, the heavy rain is hitting this morning, there's some flooding on the streets. I've uh, kept tabs on Megan and Monty Lewis. Uh, Monty and his family are in Willow Center, which is right on the And uh, last word that I got, they've had a lot of heartache in the fact that, uh, that they've lived there so long and they get married. They got as high as the highest at the bottom of the house, but not in, right, Jeff? Yes, I've heard they have a wall with yeah. windows and it's just coming in there like it's not a wall. Okay. And uh, I did also message from him and uh, I just asked him to keep them and his family, his whole family in their prayers. Uh, his daughter and son in law live in one head city. And last word there, the poor dealership, all of the uh, there was enough water that it covered the hood on the car, and of course it was Ford, so that doesn't make a lot of difference. But it didn't say that the water was that high. <laughs> <laughs> you know that we have to find it. Anyway, I'm sorry that it hasn't turned time, but it isn't time. It is the time that we need to be. Um, you should think me seriously about things, but also just um, all. I also found out that uh, Jason Streets is stationed down at Camp Virginia. Okay. And you've got you've got probably grandson down there, right? He's home? Okay. I don't know what the latest was on with Jason and his family other than that Jason took his wife that Jason's wife took the kids to the hospital where she works because they could get above the water. But uh, that's just a few people I know that were from the area too. Well Sam is okay, where are they? Okay. And and his work was bad, it's really bad. Okay, it is bad. Yeah, Sam's not going to say. And also, we were talking this morning with Bobby Hare, teaching. Okay, all right. Out and did not hear her, but she is longing. The longing is where it gets to say. I know we have several of them, like I said, I just try to put the ones that I can remember and thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I just want you to keep those folks in your prayers. Um, be thankful that uh, with some that they didn't lose everything, but uh, they still have a lot of loss and a lot of pain up to do and just ask that the God will watch over them. Um, when you get to Charlotte or the areas, if the heavy rains just start and I think more to come, so uh, be praying for their family and your prayers also. And we have uh, several moments to pray. We ask you to keep them in your prayers. Prayer this morning again is tell us to Jesus that we wish for the wrong and we'll hear our hearts in prayer. Mm -hmm. Are you
I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never go thirsty. There's only one way to become a life, so do this in your own Thank you. Oh, 
that your eyes are away I will bring to your heavenly cross and exchange someday for a crown for the old that you cross so despised by the world and I saw the
Medo Persians, the Greeks, and eventually the Romans. And it was at the time of Christ when he was born that the Romans were in rule. What I'd like to do today with me is just focus on verses 44 and 45. Daniel chapter 2, 44 and 45. I believe you look carefully at this passage that we're going to find some things that are right about the Lord's church that can determine the altitude of our attitude and thus define what our perspective is of this body of believers in Hopedale and around the world of which we are a part. This is the interpretation in look at verse 44 where it talks about the divine kingdom. Because the king had dreamt a dream which there was a statue head of gold and silver and bronze and iron and clay and the feet. But then it, the rest of the dream he saw a stone that had been made without hands, and this stone came and crushed the statue completely. And this is what we're referencing in verse 44 and 45. It was a fifth kingdom that was set up in the days of Rome, that fourth kingdom. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed, and that kingdom will not be left for another people. It will crush and put to an end all these kingdoms. But it will itself endure forever. Inasmuch as you saw a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and then it crushed the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will take place in the future. So the dream is true, and its interpretation is trustworthy. In those days, those kings, he said in verse 44, now. For any Jewish mind that lived during the time of Christ, it would be impossible for them to, to miss this event. And many are unaware of the church that Daniel chapter 2 was used by the early church to convince people that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. The early Jews in the first century church would go back to Daniel chapter 2, they would remind them, remember the kid when we learned this. And they would remember how there was Babylon, there was the Medo Persians, there were the Greeks, and then there were the Romans, of which they then lived. And then there would be another kingdom, different in nature altogether. It would be a spiritual kingdom that God would set up. And to my knowledge, best of my knowledge, the only spiritual kingdom that was set up during the days of Rome that literally turned the world upside down was the church, for which you and I are part. And the early Christians had great success convincing the other Jews that Jesus is truly Messiah because of this kingdom that was set up in the days of those kingdoms, of those kings. It says the God of heaven. I'm going to go through verse 44, verse 45, just kind of unfold some things for you that may have heard some negative things about the church. They hear some right things about the church. This kingdom has a divine foundation. God's the one who is the architect. The Bible says that there will be a kingdom. This is good news for you and me. Because we understand that the church is not the building. The church is not a place. The church is within us. The kingdom of God is within us. All kingdoms have a king. All kingdoms have a law. All kingdoms have subjects. And all kingdoms have a territory. Just think of the different governments of the world. We refer to our country as a kingdom. We don't have a king, but we have a president. We have laws. We have subjects known as citizens. And we have a territory known as the United States of America with borders. And all countries have this. God's kingdom is no different. The king is Jesus Christ. The law is the word of God. We are his subjects in the territory all of the world. Isn't that great news? That it's for everyone. This kingdom also, according to verse 24, as it was set up, would never be destroyed. Be eternal. It's the only kingdom, by the way, that's going to survive the destruction of this world. I'll probably mention that again later on some other points that I've made about what's right about the church. Furthermore, the verse says that this kingdom will not be left for another people. Jesus is not going to forsake us. He's not going to sell us out. If you've ever taken a loan out from a bank, sometimes a bank will renegotiate a loan and turn it over to another loaning agency without your permission. Say, hey, we can't do that. This is a free to find They have the right to do that, to sell your loan to another bank. You may not like that, but we've got good news. The kingdom of 
God is privately owned. And there's great benefit when something is privately owned, because when it's privately owned, it's staying in the family. And God the Father, Jesus the Son, and His Holy Spirit are our guides, not to sell us out. They're not going to sell us out to some other entity or power. We are in, our, are in His protective hand wherever that ought to give us great security. This kingdom would put an end to all these other kingdoms. This kingdom would crush all other kingdoms. We're not talking about military conquest where we go out and kill people and take people's lives. But we are talking about how we go out and we take captive every thought and bring it into obedience unto Jesus Christ. When you think of the kingdom of God, it is superior in every way to any earthly kingdom. It is superior in the way to its organization. It's superior in the way of its membership. It's superior in its way to its law that guides us. We have a king that is the sole authority. And every organization on this planet has a head over it. If it's a business, it's the president or the CEO of a company. Every church brags about their head. Some churches brag about our pastor and, and, and the minister who they call a pastor is everything and all things, and they look at him for everything. And it's almost, almost like he's God on earth. There's some churches, Catholic Church, for instance, they brag as their head, the Pope is supreme over their church. Uh, I, don't, I don't care what church you go, some churches, even churches of Christ, uh, Jesus is to be the head, right, of the church. And some churches will hold certain individuals and say, I see that they hold that person up as God, and that person becomes a dictator over the whole body. The great thing about the superior organization of the Lord's church at the top of us all is God and Jesus, His Holy Spirit. Top that if you can. And you cannot. You cannot. And that gives us great security as we go to all the world because the scripture again in verse 44 says, It will itself endure forever. When this plan ends, however it ends, the church, the kingdom, will still exist. Will be taken out of this world by none other than Jesus himself and delivered directly into the hands of the Father, the church will forever be in heaven and praise God for all time. In verse 45, he talks about this stone being made without hands. Well, all things that we see on this planet, other than the earthly creation that God created, everything in this room was made by someone's hands or made by a machine that was made by someone's hands. This pulpit was carved and put together by someone's hands. I don't know if it was mass produced or if it was personally made, maybe one of a kind. These tables, those cups, the sound system, the screen, everything you see around me was made with human hands and it'll perish. But this kingdom is made without human hands, meaning she will never perish. You and I are part of an organization that's going to last forever. Jesus himself said the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Kingdoms will rise and fall. This nation is going to continue to last. Praise God. I'm forward. Proud to be an American. But in my heart of heart, just like when I used to attend Bible service camp, Elkhorn, well, Elkhorn Valley went there one year, went to Round Lake the rest of my life. But I love how they flew the flag at Round Lake Christian Assembly. They have two flags. They had the American flag and the Christian flag on the same pole. And I'll give you one guess as to which flag flew at the top of the mast. It was the Christian flag. Because it's the Christian flag, it's God's law, that supersedes over all law. We understood when we looked at it, it wasn't the Pope, but we understood if we were God's first Christian, that we could be, we could be the best gift to America that we could be by being law abiding citizens of this country. And so having said that, just from Daniel chapter 2, verse 44 and 45, Daniel says in verse 45 that the vision that he was given, that he tells Nebuchadnezzar, because you saw the stone made with our hands, know this, that the dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. Let me ask you, was there ever a time in history where God finally did become flesh? Was there ever a time in history where a virgin did conceive and gave birth to a son? Was there ever a time in history 
For a boy became subject to his parents until such age when he fulfilled all righteousness of baptism and fulfilled a three year ministry without ever sinning. Was there ever since such a time when a king like that ever walked this earth that never sinned? Amen, brother. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And then they took him, nailed him to the cross, and buried him for three days. He was sent 40 days later. And someday he's coming back because he sent his spirit ten days after the ascension and gave us a gospel to preach so that all peoples of all nations become members of that kingdom, that church, of which is spoken of right here in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44 45. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to learn about Chad back in Chad and Benjo. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to learn about David and Lions, David and three half and David and six, but there's a lot more to go to Daniel than there's a fire of points in the Lions. There's a lot of hope there in those verses. So, let me ask you again. Have any of you in the room here ever heard any negative talk about the church? <laughs> Almost that will laugh I read that. In Acts chapter 2, they were barely begun. I mean, they haven't even baptized anybody yet. They were just faithful. These men are drunk. <laughs> there they are, speaking in languages of the faithful. The negativity already started to look out. These men are drunk. Because they were not done. This is fulfillment of the scripture. And he went on to preach Jesus. 3,000 that day were baptized in Jesus Christ. Next chapter 26, verse 24, they go on the book of Acts. You want to read about like negativity in the book of Acts? It, it, you, you can find it in a lot of places. But two of those places are in Acts 2 and also in Acts chapter 26. And this time, Paul is before a king of an earthly kingdom. He's standing before Agrippa. And as he's declaring in Jesus Christ the resurrection of the dead, you'll notice in verse 24 that Felix cried out, it said, Paul, you're out of your mind. Your much learning has made you mad. No, Paul, you are insane. Paul said, I am not out of my mind, but I speak the words of sober truth. So why should it surprise us when you're negative? Are you going to quit because of your negative about the church? Did they ever speak negative about Jesus? Remember when he's casting out demons? In Mark chapter 3. They blasphemed against the Holy Spirit when they said, He is casting out demons by the ruler of demons. That's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. We need to look at a righteous, holy God and delivering people from the oppression of Satan. And all they can do is with negative, critical spirit, their perspective, their altitude was so low, their attitude struck. They said, He's doing it by the power of the devil. And Jesus is basically saying, If you can look at me, the righteous, holy Son of God, and say, I'm doing it by the power of the devil, you are so far gone, you can never be saved. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Now, as far as I know, there's things that they still say about the church yet today that is negative. How many heard this? I don't go to that church because there's a bunch of them. That's right. You read that? Well, there's a bunch of good and two shoes. You know? Uh, they just want our money. They think they're above the law. They think they're better than everybody else. You know, all the negativity. All the negativity. I would like to overcome that. Well, first of all, understand there's not a plan or <laughs> Not there's not an organization on the planet that hasn't had some negativity. All you have to do is go to Google and, and type in Walmart and you're going to have some negativity. Right? You, you could probably type in Alice in Wonderland and come up with negativity. I, I don't know anything out there, any person on the planet that always has something negative said about it. I believe we ought to live upright lives. And I don't think we have to go around bragging with people talking badly about us. But did someone say, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you? Sometimes when the negativity comes, it might be because we're doing something right. Some of the negativity is justified, to be sure. I've seen them on the news, I've seen scandals over the years, most recent there's scandals in the Catholic Church about priesthood and abusing children and all these things, and blah, 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 blah. And there's not a church, there's not a preacher, there's not a human being, there's not a Christian. I can go in your life, my church, find something in your closet, right? We can all find something in each other's closet. We're not perfect, but yet today, in Jesus' eyes, when he looks at the church, he loved her so much, he was more than die for her. Just like husbands and loving wives, and Christ loved the church, gave himself for her, that he might present the church to himself in all the glory, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. What does that mean, glorious church? That word comes from holding in high honor, of high repute, honorable, 
When you ever look for wise guys and say, honey, you look glorious today. You look glorious. That means you look gorgeous. You're beautiful. I love you. Does that mean your wives are perfect? Don't even there real quick. Let me wrap it up. Right? But the wise to be treated with such honor and respect. The reason we do that then is because Jesus loved us sinners so much that he died for us and he present us to God without spot or wrinkle. Every reason to simply make an illustration is probably not without wrinkle. But I do the best I can. I pull it out of the dryer and I don't just slap it on. I iron it the best I can. Alright? Now, if I iron it like I did when I Iron my first shirt, it would also have a spot. It would be in the shape of an iron right here. So I really pulled this blade in there and see what would happen. Mama could not happy about that. And she never let me iron again. But God loves us so much that, and Jesus loves us so much, that when he presents us to the Father, if you can picture this, please, that when he presents us to the grand creator of all things, he wants God to look upon us and so we have no spot with no wrinkle, we're glorious in our ways. Jesus does not want to drag us before the Father and say, Hey, Dad, let me show you all the faults of my wife here. He's not going to do that. He wants us to present, He wants to present us to the Father without spot. Are we without spot? I'm a sinner just like you, but with the, Jesus, the blood of Jesus covering me, we are. With the, let me rephrase that. With the blood of Jesus covering us, we are without spot. Spot. That's his grace, his sanctification, his cleansing through his blood, through our love and obedience to him. As I said, there's not a point, there's not a business, a person, anything on the planet does not have something negative said about it. But since you and I live in a society that would rather hear slander than to hear something good said about someone, I think it's vital for us to have a comeback to those that would slander the church, even the church here in Hopedale. I heard another church not too long ago where some individual wanted to meet with the leaders and uh, they told the leaders, they said, your church isn't very friendly. By the way, I've been in this congregation and it, it is a friendly congregation. It's not this church here, but it's another congregation which I know. They said, your church isn't very friendly. And when I heard that, I immediately went a little line in my thinking. Because I would have said to the individual, it takes one another one. <laughs> you know, that's what I would have said, but that's not what they said. They said something like this, you know, it's a lot of times you get out of it, but you put into it. And that church is friendly. But their perspective of that church is determined by the altitude of their attitude. And I'm not sure they're down on knees giving praise to God. They're not down on their knees giving thanks to God. They're not down on their knees loving God. That's not why they're there. They're only there to criticize and tear down. Well, just we need verses alone. Daniel 2, verse 44 to 45. Let me listen for you quickly. Maybe, I don't know if I would do quickly for you or not, but listen, you don't have to come up with this list. Make your own list of what's right about the church. I have a wife. I don't always treat her as an ought. I readily confess that. But Jesus Christ has never treated the church wrongly ever. And I thank God he didn't want to strike because of our behavior. And, uh, but I, I do have to, I'm, I'm just trying to pat myself on the back. I asked Bessie at the beginning of service, hey, hon, when we're singing the doxology, you might come back and run the PowerPoint for that song we're going to sing. Okay? How many of you know I love a CD? Right? So, I'm watching her as the offering is being taken. And she got up the whole of the doxology with even song and she was back there to play. Then she went by, I didn't tell her that she was beautiful. I didn't tell her that at all. I just said, honey, you got a good memory. I hope you have a good memory today, which you take out of here. Here's what's right about the church. Remember this. Regardless of what's wrong, number one, she is God's kingdom. That's what's right about the church. She's not founded on me or you. She's founded on the perfect one, the master of the universe. Her architect is perfect and holy. Number two, she will never be destroyed. That's good news. That's what's right. Because when I read that, I understand that her architect is our protector. And he is forever the everlasting God. And he will protect us. Listen, he will protect us as long as we live all things according to the code. As long as you honor God's word, he will honor you. You have his promise on that. 
If you need a personal devotional scripture for his promise on that first Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, he honors me, I will honor. God promises you that. You honor me, I will honor you. Number three, she is cherished by her maker. God will never give us away. He'll never leave us or forsake us. In Christ, we're always going to have a father. We're never going to be orphaned. We always have him there forever faithful. Number four, she can stand circumspect. In other words, she can stand upright because her mission, her mandate, her mind is pure. I'm talking about the true church. Our motives are pure. We're not trying to use you, not trying to abuse you, not trying to just take from you. We're trying to bless you, bless each other, so we can all be built up close to God. I mean, you know, if you're close to God, the devil won't be there. There are other things that are right about the church that I did not draw from Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, 45. Throughout the week, I've been praying about this, thinking on this. And so I sent myself some notes on my phone. Number five, here's what's right about the church. Though we leave sometimes, she never does. And by the way, you can be sitting in the seat every week. Like the older brother of that prophet son. Remember the prodigal son? One boy left home, but there was another boy that stayed home all, all along. The boy that stayed home all along refused to forgive his younger brother. That boy was there all the time, but he was absent. He was there in body, but absent in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? You may leave, but she remained. The church will always remain. I pray so in this locality as well. Number six, as I said before, her founder, her architect, her sustainer, her redeemer, her stronghold is God. People say, who saved you? God did through Jesus Christ. Who protects you? God does through Jesus Christ. Who's your stronghold? Who's the heart of your salvation? God is. Talk that if you can. And you can't. Nobody can. You tell me all you want about what's wrong with the church, but that's six things that are right about the church. Number seven, her charter, that's the Bible, is divine and attainable. I love that. It's not like calculus. Do you ever take calculus? How many took chemistry? Biology? Do you ever take anything in school that scared you to death? Right? You walk in and you know if you know you're in trouble when Einstein's the teacher. And they said he wouldn't get past first grade. He's got this huge formula on the board to so want test on this thing. It's not calculus, folks. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. Child as young as five, as old as 95 and above. And understand the simple terms of God's salvation is divine, yet it is attainable. He's placed it right over our hands. You can't do it through Christ. Number eight, her growth. Her growth is by invitation. How many of you ever seen a wedding invitation? Come on, folks. Did you go? Or you just picked to get somebody went? I didn't know this, but some people were actually crashed weddings. I didn't know that. Now they're asking people as you pull to the parking lot, what's the name of the bride and groom? And if you don't know the name of the bride and groom, you can't come to the wedding. Because some people are just there for the meal afterwards and the alcohol. I didn't know they did that. A few months ago, I was thinking, I wonder if people will crash funerals. You know, they read it at the funeral. Because a lot of times the funerals are not going to say we have a lunch and provide it. They just go for the free meal. They actually do that. By the way, we need to tell Dave and Sarah they didn't help at their place because they had signs all the way along showing how to get there, Dave and Sarah, Dave and Sarah. So, you know, you, you, you could have crashed that one. But the growth of this kingdom is by invitation. That's why she keeps growing because everyone has an invitation. I love that. Her duration is forever. And when I think about this local congregation, providing that this local church stays true to the teachings of God, her duration can be until the coming of Christ. And I pray that so Because after you and I, if the Lord tarries, if the Lord doesn't come back after you and I are dead and gone, I was telling Diana this morning, I said, by the way, you're Diana Grimes this morning. You know, so your prayer list, Diana Grimes, in and out of the ER this past week, was like amazing since she died several years ago. Right? But what happened was, I was looking for another picture of a boy being baptized. And you see some pictures of people being baptized. You're starting to see some of them here. And I looked at this old picture from years ago, and I, I looked on a PowerPoint from uh, 2014. And at the beginning, at the end, that I must have been a special day because Debbie Johnson, Doris Bowles, and Diane Bryan were all in a group picture. Right? And then I did the bulletin. But I was thinking about Diane Bryan. 
But in my brain, I was thinking, Diana Dunlap and NIER, but my fingers were saying Diana Grimes. <laughs> and I didn't get, even as I was quickly, I'm trying to get off on that. I, I, I just wanted to stay focused here. Oh, I know the ones. <laughs> Ever were dead and gone. This congregation, this can bring me great comfort in you as well. We talked in the class today at Sunday school about individuals that have passed on the board. The bring me comfort and understanding to know that if your kids are here to their our age and we're dead and gone, the church here can still be here for them. Whether we're on my street or on the drive. Right? And that's kind of what it is. And to know that my grandchildren, our loved ones, and we're dead and gone, we've been gone a hundred years, but to have the comfort of knowing that this church remains true, this church will still be here. The creation is forever. Number 10, our foundation is the truth. We talked about that. Number 11, I love this one. The true church does not pass unrighteous judgment on her fellow members. There are times we have to pass judgment, there are times we have to tough love. If a, if a brother or sister is in sin, I understand that. But let's do our best, please, that if there were to be a rumor out there about someone in our church that was slanderous, I know that's going to happen. Right? That's what, that's, let's not have a tendency to always believe the words. One thing that I appreciate about this congregation over the years, even with issues from the past, when things have happened, the brother or sister has been found to be in gross, terrible sin. I appreciate the attitude of this congregation that I've seen over the years where the people have said, without exception, I never thought that. I have never thought that. Because in some circles, that's all they think. It's worse. But the people here, thus far, have always tried to think the best of each other. Amen. And I hope that will continue. That's so important. It's so vital because if we don't do that, who would want to come to an organization that's only going to think the worst? Okay. Number 12, it's because we exist for the sole purpose of restoring the laws. We exist for the sole purpose of edifying the saved. And seeing to it that everyone who has fallen away, if they are willing, to be returned back to the family and ultimately safely delivered into heaven. Number 13, she is the. How far are you going? I'm going to 15. Go on with that. Okay? Keep your thinking. Number 13, that's the key thing. She is the only assembly bound for heaven. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the only group of people. See this young girl right here? She's almost three years old. Lincoln Man, he's going around. I, I use them because of my grandkids. This is why I have kids. Okay, so they have sermon illustrations. Listen to those. You saw him like a week or two ago wow, shaking hands with everybody. Remember that? He was shaking the angel's hand and he was shaking everybody's hands. He went over to Bob Jesus. And Bob Jesus, I didn't know he came Bob Jesus was talking to somebody else. And Bessie said, Guys, you, he's watching you. He's watching you. Better keep behaving yourself, man, because Lincoln's doing what you're doing. You know, and he's going around shaking the hand and like that. That's awesome. This church, the only organization on the planet, this is now. This is the only organization on the planet that's going to heaven. You best be on board, amen? You best be on board. Sure. Number 14, she's God's family. So I love how uh, the leaders have brought to this congregation for the last few years. We are family. And number 15, we're here on purpose. That's my final point. We're here on purpose. I'm going to trace it from Daniel chapter 2, verse 44 to 45. The church, the kingdom, is not an afterthought of God. Actually, there's some churches out there that teach that. Believe it or not, long story short, they think Jesus meant to set up an earthly kingdom. They killed him instead. So God said, oh my, what do you have to do? I'm going to plan B, and it will be this crack church. Church was plan A all the way, and it was here by purpose, designed by purpose. I told you about a little boy born on August 20th, 1958, put up for adoption. And I didn't know at the time, my parents didn't know at the time, the judge didn't know it at the time, that there had been a request made that I be placed in a Christian church home. Not just a Christian home, but a Christian church home. It wasn't until the adoption was complete on December 20th, 1960, that the caseworker that was writing the final paperwork talking to my mom one day. <laughs> and she said, what church are you going to? work work with a Christian church. And she goes, really? And that's when it was let out that there had been a request made that this child be placed in a Christian church home. And I found my, I didn't find my way, God found me. God delivered me into a home 
on purpose. There was a Christian church home because my blood mother prayed prayer that I be prayed to a Christian church home. I wasn't there by accident. I was there by God's design. And the kingdom is here by God's design. And the sermon title was going to be Here on Right. I'm just going to leave a blank line and let you fill in what the sermon is for you. Are you here on purpose? Are you here to praise God? Or are you just here by accident? Here by coercion? I've seen folks go under the water by coercion. I used to do burial counseling years ago. And I still remember one individual that, that he did. I, was, I just kind of reluctant to marry the two of them because I could see that he and her didn't. They weren't, they weren't seeing eye to eye spiritually. And when he realized that, he said, let's go get baptized. I said, what do you mean, let's go get baptized? And I thought it was honest and sincere. And I baptized him. And guess what? I never saw him again. I never saw him again. Some people are forced in by coercion. Can't see a man against the will, man. Here on purpose. Oh, that the world would behold the glory of God's Son. And that she would be here by purpose. Because they love God. They want to praise God. Are there bad things in the church? You bet. But there's a lot more right about the church than what's wrong about the church. So as we get ready to close out our service this morning, it's all to give an invitation. But I have to know that the church in the Bible is not negative. I can't find anywhere in the church in the Bible where at the end of each Sunday service they made an appeal to those who are lost outside of Jesus Christ. We only do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But my belief is revivals aren't for once a year. Invitations aren't for once a year. I get the invitation every day everywhere I go. How about you? It doesn't have to be on a Sunday morning. You may on Sunday night. You may on Tuesday night. Once a day. It's three in the morning. Anytime is the right time when you decide you're coming because you love God. You're going to praise His name. You know why? Because I'm not the only one that needs a Savior. And you're not the only one that needs a Savior. We all need a Savior. Let's stand and sing. I love what you write about the church. And I love you. We love you. We love you. Everyone needs compassion. Kindness of the Savior. The mercy of our name. Everyone needs faith. Kindness of the Savior. The hope of the Savior.